What do you think of when you hear the word fermentation? Maybe a food or beverage, for example, cabbage, sour, beer, preservation, pickles, kimchi, and that list goes on. Now, as you can see in this wordle, that responses to that question very greatly and most likely depends on your experience with a certain food or drink. This is just a reminder that K-State Research and Extension Programming is available to all people. Hello, my name is Lori Wellner, Health and Food Safety Agent for K-State Research and Extension in Wyandotte County, and I'm excited to share a new program with you called Taking a New Look at Fermented Foods, developed by my colleague, Donna Krug from Cottonwood Extension District. Now, just a little side note before we get started, you'll wanna make sure that the volume is up on your computer. Admittedly, this is new territory for me in terms of making it, not necessarily consuming it. So I hope you too are open to learning the ins and outs of fermented foods, including the history, how to make it, and health benefits. Now, just a little back history, Donna's motivation to do the fact sheet and lesson came from attending a conference in which a speaker who was a gastroenterologist addressed creating good bacteria in the gut for overall health and stress adding fermented foods into your diet on a regular basis. She also subscribes to the Tuff Youth University Health and Nutrition Letter, and it was in the January 2014 edition that they published an article entitled, Discover the Digested Benefits of Fermented Foods. Then a few years later in October 2018, published Fabulous Fermented Foods, which was updated this past February. You can check these out for yourself. There is a small subscription fee um, for the online newsletters and also for the hard copies. This is the fact sheet that accompanies the lesson and there's the link to access it is at the very bottom of the screen. So you might wanna do that just to get some of the extra details that we aren't able to, to discuss today. There are many different stories that talk about discovering fermentation accidentally, but nonetheless, we do know that it's been around thousands of years. According to some historians, fermentation was discovered accidentally when workers building the Great Wall in China packed some cabbages with salt in pots, hoping to preserve them. To their surprise, when they opened the pots later, they found them bubbling and having a pleasant sour smell. This is just one example of a possible timeline in the history of fermentation from the chemical engineering and chemical process technology starting in 7,000 BC until present day. This is another timeline that I found from the Linda Hall Library, and you can see some variations in food sources, but again, both starting in 7,000 BC until present day. All right, so the first objective of this lesson is to get you familiar with some of the products on the market and better yet, give them a try. So add them to your grocery list. If we were meeting face to face, I would have a variety of products for you to sample, which would probably include some more common items like kefir, which is, you can see here in the middle of the screen, and kombucha. The next objective is to understand that fermentation can be a means to preserve certain foods. The links included in the next slide from the Colorado State University and the University of Arizona provide descriptive step-by-step -step to achieve a fermented product. In this slide, you can see um, kimchi, which is a popular Korean food often used as a condiment and it, and it is considered a staple. These are the links I mentioned, and specifically the second link there really gives those the details step-by-step um, -step on making that kimchi. The third objective is to become familiar with some of the more common fermentation tools. I wanted to show you a couple of options on the market, but by no means am I endorsing the brands. So just be sure to do your own homework. The first illustration here is the Mason Tops Complete Mason Jar Fermentation Kit. Now they run about 50 bucks. On the picture to the right of the screen are several items in the kit. 
The tall wooden device shown here is referred to as the pickle packer designed for small batch fermentation of sauerkraut and other vegetables in both wide mouth and regular mouth canning jars. Its purpose is to be used for packing the veggies for ferments in the jars. The clear round items are pickle pebble glass fermenting weights and are designed for use with fermentation and to ensure that the vegetables stay below the surface of the brine and thereby eliminating exposure to air. Now the red and blue items are pickle pipes, a one piece airlock device that allows gas to escape as needed without letting contaminants back into the jar. The next option shows a kit from Ball with a slightly different pressure release valve and a stainless steel spring that holds the product below the brine. All right, moving on to objective four, which is to understand the health benefits from eating fermented foods on a regular basis and thereby restoring healthy gut bacteria. Naturally fermented foods have gotten a great deal of attention from health experts these days because they may help strengthen your gut biome. The 100 trillion or so bacteria and microorganisms that live in your digestive tract. Fermented foods are preserved using an age old process that not only boosts the, the food's shelf life and nutritional value, but can give your body a dose of healthy probiotics which are live microorganisms crucial to healthy digestion. And you may have heard a healthy gut translates into a healthy immune system. This chart highlights pre and probiotics. Prebiotics are specialized plant fibers. They act like fertilizers that stimulate the growth of healthy bacteria in the gut. Prebiotics are found in many fruits and vegetables, especially those that contain complex carbohydrates, such as fiber. Now these carbohydrates are not digestible by your body, so they pass through the digestive system to become food for the bacteria and other microbes. The list of prebiotic foods are long from asparagus to, to yams, and you can do a quick search or check with your unregistered dietitian. Probiotics, are different in that they contain live organisms, usually specific strains of bacteria that directly add to the population of healthy microbes in your gut. Like prebiotics, probiotics can be found in a variety of food sources. Probably the most common probiotic food is yogurt. Yogurt is made by fermenting milk with different bacteria, which are left in the final product. Other bacteria fermented foods such as sauerkraut and kombucha and kimchi are also good sources of probiotics. The ingredients in kimchi, the vegetables, garlic, ginger, red pepper, function as a growth media for the bacteria and the source of many um, numerous compounds produced during the fermentation process. So kimchi is an excellent vegetable-based health-promoting food. You just want to try to strive and, and include uh, several pre and pro biotic food sources each day. This slide talks about the different techniques for fermenting vegetables, both with dry salting in which the finely ground sea salt is rubbed between each of the cabbage leaves and brining in which the larger chunks are going to be fermented. Now the picture on the left shows the beginning stage of kimchi preparation using one fourth head of cabbage, half a cabbage, and rubbing salt, which is non-iodized salt, that's important, between the leaves. You allow that to set for a period of time and then rinse it well. Generally speaking, you'll use two tablespoons of salt per two pounds of cabbage. Now don't be tempted to skip this part because of the amount of salt. You can rinse it prior to eating to reduce some of the salt, but it is a crucial ingredient because it draws out the moisture and softens it. The product then goes into a large bowl and is weighed down, which causes the cabbage to release its moisture. Brining 
shown here on the right with the squash in the jar, involves, again, larger chunks using a pound of vegetables per quart jar and about two cups of brine. Now, standard brine strength is about one teaspoon of salt per one cup of water, which works very well with most vegetables. I like this, this slide. It's very colorful. It illustrates K-State purple sauerkraut on the left and kimchi on the right that are basically being massaged after about two hours of sitting and being weighed down. Carrots and green onion, ginger, garlic, which are those aromatic ingredients, are added to the kimchi along with other ingredients, such as red pepper flakes, Korean chili flakes, which are used often in kimchi and are fairly spicy, so you can alter those to suit your taste preferences. These next three slides address the rules for success. Now this slide emphasizes the importance of starting with vegetables that have been grown using good food safety practices. Also, be certain to wash all surfaces and containers that will be used with good hot suzzy water and rinse very well before using. All right. You'll fill the jar, but not too full, just to the shoulder of the jar, leaving at least two inches of head space when using the dry salt method. Fermented food will expand as it becomes bubbly and it can ooze out of the jar if you're not careful. If using the brine method, fill to the neck of the jar. And again, like I said earlier, be certain to use non-iodized salt. Now, don't underfill the jar either, which would allow room for airspace, possibly causing mold and scum. As a side note, one quart jar will hold two pounds of vegetables when dry salting and one pound when adding brine. And remember, these de details can be found also in the publication that I mentioned earlier, so don't worry if you don't get all of this down. The picture on the right illustrates the product being pounded into the jar, thereby releasing the moisture. A glass weight then is added to the jar as, as shown on the left, making sure there is no room around the edge of the jar. And then the valve or that pipple pipe is secured, making sure not to allow air. The jar has been dated so that you'll know when to check it and when it will be done. Kimchi is ready in about three to five days. So if this is your first time at making a fermented food, perhaps give this a try. And just remember, if you let kimchi go too long, it will become soft. Sauerkraut is a bit more sensitive to time and temperature and will take longer to ferment depending on the temperature. If you store sauerkraut at temperatures between 70 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit, it will be fully fermented in about three to four weeks. At 60 to 65 Fahrenheit, it may take up to six weeks. And at temperatures lower than 60, it may not ferment at all. And at temperatures over 75, the product may become soft. Once the fermentation process is complete, you can transfer it to the refrigerator. And it's important to remember that fermentation continues until you refrigerate it or that you process it properly and then you store it on your shelf. In the refrigerator, it will keep several months safely. You'll recognize some of these terms that I've addressed so far with dry salting and the brining. And then these are some of the common ones that you'll come across when you start reading into the fermentation. And these you can also find in the fact sheet that I mentioned earlier. All right, the sauerkraut recipe in the fact sheet is from the sixth edition of the So Easy to Preserve from the University of Georgia who are credited with having done a great deal of research related to food preservation. And that can be seen at the top right corner. The books by Sandor, Sandor Katz also were on the reading list. And I know used very um, quite a bit by Donna, who again authored this, this material. 
And as I mentioned before, Colorado State University website, which is in the upper left, um, um, has a great deal of information too. This is just another way to access the publication mentioned earlier, along with many other publications, plus just a wealth of information available through K-State Research and Extension. Many people have lost touch with one of the oldest and simplest forms of preserving food through fermentation. And I hope after today's presentation, you are encouraged to include fermented foods into your daily diet and perhaps give making your own a try too. The steps are simple and outlined in the publication. And in doing so, you will have the opportunity to, to find out for yourself just exactly how delicious and nutritious fermented food can be. I just wanna thank you for tuning in to today's program. For more information on nutrition, food safety and health, please reach out to me through email or simply give me a call. I'll look forward to it. And in the meantime, take care and be healthy.